Hi, Dr. Hurt here. In this video, I'm going to explain why I use the robot and then how I use it when I do my knee replacements. Okay, so when you do a knee replacement, you just have to understand the basics of it. Okay, so this is a replacement model. You've got a femoral side, you've got your tibia here, and you've got your polyethylene or a special plastic that goes in between. That's how all knee replacements are basically made. You're not cutting the end of the femur off. You're just resurfacing about eight millimeters of bone here on both sides, okay? And you make um, fairly typical cuts, no matter the brand of knee replacement, okay? So these cuts look like this. So I'm gonna take the femur off and I'm gonna take the tibia off, and you're gonna be able to see what they look like. So on the femoral side, you've got these angles here. You can see them right there. On the tibia side, the same thing. You've got one flat cut, all right? And this is what we're creating before we put the knee replacement in. We're creating what we call gaps, okay? There's an extension gap. With the knee extended, there's a gap here, and there's a flexion gap. You can see the knee is flexed here and here. And these gaps need to be rectangular and they need to be balanced. What does that mean? That means we want them to be appropriate measurements so that your knee can get good range of motion. So first, I want them to be rectangular. I don't want a trapezoid. If they're a trapezoid, when you put the implants in, it's gonna wobble around and be unstable. It may just be a nuisance or it may be extremely severe. So just two or three millimeters difference can make a big difference clinically. So we wanna get that as exact as possible. The other part of it, as I said, is getting the gaps appropriately measured and balanced. So when you do an extension gap, you can see here, if you make that too small, all right, you don't cut enough off the femur or off the tibia in this case, your knee is going to struggle to get extension. So that person's not going to be able to straighten their knee because there's too much bone in the way. We should have cut another two millimeters. One millimeter of bone typically equals five degrees of extension. All right, so just cutting one more millimeter can go from here to here. So that's why it's really important to be precise in your cuts. All right, same thing with flexion. We cut too little bone back here and you're trying to bend your knee, the, bo the bone's getting in the way, the metal's getting in the way, and you're struggling to get your knee bent. And so we want to make sure that we balance them. If we cut too much bone on th off the front, you may hyperextend. So that's why it's important to balance these gaps. The things that make these gaps possible are not only the cuts that we make, but it's the ligaments on the sides, all right? They hear these ligaments, when you pull them out taut, that's what creates the gaps. It used to be if we cut uh, in years prior, or even sometimes now, if we cut erroneously and we created a trapezoid, well, people would just come over and they would cut or release this ligament to make it fit. And sometimes that's necessary if you have severe contractures, a really, really bad arthritic knee. But if you can avoid cutting the ligaments, your recovery is going to be easier and faster. It's going to also feel more normal because we're not changing the, the length of your knees that have been like that for your entire life. All right. You're not trying to get your knee to adopt a new position. We're actually trying to conform to your knee's natural anatomy. And the robot's letting me see that. So the robot lets me do two things. It lets me see things I couldn't see. I can measure before I actually cut and it lets me implement my plan with a level of precision that I've never been able to do before. So for instance, once I make my plan and get it all dialed in, I bring the robot in and it helps me make these cuts. It keeps me perfectly in plane, all right? And it's got little boundaries that say out of bounds and it won't let the saw go out of those. And that level of precision has just completely transformed my clinical outcomes for my patients. Well-balanced gaps means easier, faster recovery, happier patients, happier clinic. That's why I use the robot. It's been great. I love it. I love it for my patients. I love it for my practice. And um, for me, the foreseeable future will continue to use it. Now here's a screenshot of the actual computer screen that I use in the operating room to help me do my planning. The green in this case represents the implants. So look along the top row, those three views you see, that's the front, the endon, and the profile view of the femur. The same thing is along the bottom row, the front, the endon, and the profile view. Now, if you look closely here, you can see these arrows are around every single one of these cross sections. Here's how I can adjust the implants before I actually ever make a cut. So once we have our implant positions perfected, we bring the robot in that you see here. It's got wheels and it just slides in next to the patient. At the top, you see this large arm. That's a robotic arm and it controls where that saw blade is in space. The robot doesn't actually move the saw bay back and forth. I have to do that, but it does keep me in plane and keep me within the boundaries to help protect vital structures. 
Before I bring the robot in to actually make the cuts, I do have to attach these jigs to the femur and the tibia. That's the way that the robot knows where the knee is in space. That's how it knows what the gaps are going to be before we actually cut. And that's how we actually bring the saw blade in and it can make the cuts with accuracy without causing damage to the structures. Once everything is ready, the robotic arm moves the blade into place. And as I said, you make the cuts with much better accuracy than I've ever been able to do before while viewing it all on the screen. Here's another example. We'll show you some more of this later on, but that gives you a precursor. So here's an actual surgery sped up speed. They just adjusted the camera so you can see the knee easily. And the first thing I do after I open the knee is attach these jigs so that the robot knows where the femur and tibia are in space. So now I'll just rotate the hip to find the hip center. I'll touch the ankle edges and then I'll go through and I'll touch various points on the femur and then the tibia in a registering process so that the robot can know exactly where the knee is in space. This is a very precise procedure and it's custom for every single knee. These CT scans you're seeing are the actual representative CT scans of the patient. That's why you have to go get the CT scan prior to surgery so that we can have this and be able to map it and prepare it for your particular case. Okay, finally we get to the actual planning portion of this. So you can see these gaps, 18 and 25, it's not a rectangle. And we talked about the importance of that at the beginning. So watch those numbers at top and watch the green as it moves down. The femur is actually moving. Now the tibia is going to move as well, and I'm changing these gaps by changing the projected cuts of the implants. And this is before we ever do anything. Now the knee is in flexion, and I'm actually going to put some instruments between the femur and tibia and pry it up, and that will get those ligaments taut like we talked about. Look at the gaps. They're 18 and 19, so I'll make some adjustments so that they're equal, 20 and 20, and then I'm going to move it up one because I wanted to try to get to 21 on this particular patient. And I'm happy with that. On this final screen, we look at various things. I can see how our rotation is relative to the native knee to make sure our kneecap tracking is good. I can look at what are the cuts going to look like, how are the implants going to look on top of the femur in its final construct. All right, so we're ready to make our cuts. We're bringing the robotic arm in. It has a sterile cover on it. And now I'm going to show the robot where the saw blade is in space by taking it through some preparatory positions. We change the saw blade onto it and then we push the button and it lines up for our first cut. As I take away the green, I'm taking away the bone in real life as well. And you can see those green boundaries that I stay within and it won't let me go outside of those boundaries protecting so many of the vital structures. All right, I'm just about finished with this first cut. Now I'm going to go to the femur. All right, the saw blade's lined up and we're making our cuts again. As I said before, that green just shows where the bone has not been cut yet. Those boundaries keep me from hurting the vessels or the ligaments on the sides. That little area where it was red is where I went half a millimeter too deep in one small area, and that's inconsequential. Sometimes I have to take my time if the bone is really rigid and hard. And sometimes I'll go over to the same area more than once just to make sure there was no skiving of the saw blade. Finally, we go back, we put our trials in, and we take the, the knee through a range of motion to confirm that everything ended up exactly where we wanted it. We can make small adjustments from here. We can make sure that all of our implants are fitting well and just make sure that we've done an overall excellent job for our patient reproducing the exact knee that we wanted. I hope this video was helpful to you. I'm, obviously, I can answer more questions in person, but I wanted to do this because I thought actually seeing these videos and seeing these clips while I talk over them would be the most helpful. Um, if I haven't met you, please come in. I'm happy to discuss your case in person and see if you're a good candidate for knee replacement or a partial knee replacement or if we can do other things to help you short of surgery, which is always what we want to do if we can. Thanks for watching.